Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Carlo Ojed. I am an emergency physician and in this patient education video, we're gonna talk about the Boxer's Fracture. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you don't miss any new episodes. Now let's get ready for another episode of Dr. ER.TV. What is a Boxer's Fracture? Well, a fracture is another word to say broken bone. A boxer's fracture is when a person breaks a specific part of the hand bones. The hand bones are also called the metacarpals. The hand bones involved in a boxer's fracture is the bone between your little finger and the wrist, the fifth metacarpal. Even though this fracture is called boxer's fracture, it does not usually happen to boxers. Instead, it usually happens to people when they punch a wall or other hard object. What are the symptoms of a boxer's fractures? Well, symptoms of a boxer's fracture will include the following. Pain in the area of the fracture, usually the head of the metacarpal right here. Swelling, usually on the back of the hand. Bruising, usually on the palm of the hand. The little finger or side of the hand look like it's bent or abnormal in position. Is there a test that we can do for diagnosing boxer's fractures? Well, of course. Your doctor or nurse will ask about your symptoms, do a physical exam, and most likely order an x-ray of your hand. The x-ray will actually show the crack or break and the degree of angulation, therefore telling us how we best need to manage this injury. How is boxer's fractures treated? Well, the treatment will depend on the severity of the fracture. If you have an open cut with a fracture, this is called an open bone fracture, your doctor will have to wash the cut out very well. He or she will also have to give you a tetanus shot if it's been too many years since your last one. For the first few days after the injuries, your doctor will probably recommend one or more of the following. To rest your hand, to keep it elevated, keep it above your heart level as much as possible. This is helpful only in the first 48 hours after the injury to decrease the amount of swelling and potentially decrease uh, chances of infection for an open wound. Put ice on your hand. You can put a cold gel pack, a bag of ice, or a bag of frozen vegetables in the area every one or two hours for about 10 to 15 minutes at a time. Put a thin towel between the ice and the skin as not to burn the skin. Do this for about the first six hours after the injury and then you can spur them apart even further. Taking pain medication. If you have a lot of pain or a severe fracture, your doctor will prescribe a strong pain medicine. If your fracture is mild, your doctor might recommend that you take an over-the-counter pain medication like ibuprofen, Tylenol, Naproxen, or something like that. Uh, but if the pain is severe, we'll most likely prescribe a pain medication, a narcotic type medication, whether it be Aldrum, Hydrocodone, or for severe injuries, Oxycodone. Wearing of a splint. Wearing a splint keeps your hand bones in a position so it, the, the, the fracture can heal. But before your doctor puts it on a splint, he or she will make sure that your hand bones are in the correct alignment. If your bones are not aligned correctly, he, might, he or she might need to do a procedure to align the bones back in position and correct it before the splinting. Now, sometimes we'll splint it as is to allow later on the orthopedic physician to fix this in this office, whether it be by uh, reduction, manual reduction, or even surgery. So surgery is always an option. Even when the doctor reduces it in the ER, that bone can move, or whether the reduction was not complete to obtain the best alignment and the best healing, you might need surgery to hold it in place so it can heal correctly. You might also need to work with a physical therapist or, or an exercise expert after the fracture heals. The physical therapist will show you exercise and stretches to strengthen your hand and finger muscles to keep them from getting stiff and bring you back to normal function. How long does a boxer's fracture take to heal? Well, a boxer's fracture usually takes about four to six weeks to heal, depending on the type of the fracture severity and the procedures done, whether it be a reduction or surgery. Healing time will depend also on the person. Healthy children may heal much quickly than older adults or adults that have diabetes, circulatory problems, etc. Can you do anything to improve the healing process? Of course you can. 
It is important to follow all your doctor's instructions while the fracture is healing. Plus, doctors usually recommend that people with a fracture eat a healthy diet. That includes getting enough calcium, vitamin D, and protein because it will help the bones reform and heal this fracture segment. Do not damage the splint or get it wet as this will weaken it and therefore delay healing. If you smoke, try to stop smoking. Fractures can take longer to heal when you smoke. When should you call your doctor or nurse? Well, after you are treated in the emergency department or urgent care center for a boxer's fractures, your doctor or nurse will tell you when you need to call. In general, you should call if you have severe pain, uh, that is pain that is worse than when we saw you initially, or, or your pain or swelling is getting worse. Of course, if you have any new symptoms or worsening symptoms than when we initially saw you. Also, if you have numbness or tingling of your fingers, or your fingers look blue or purple, or if the splint becomes damaged or wet or, or soft, because it will no longer protect the fracture from moving, therefore messing up what we did in the ER. And that's everything you need to know about boxer's fracture. What is it? How is it treated? What you need to watch for? Red flags that something else is going on wrong and you need to return for further medical care. And ultimately that you might require surgery or a procedure to do a permanent fix, a permanent alignment of that bone so that it can heal properly. I want to thank you for watching this video. Again, my name is Dr. Carlo Ojed. Patient education video. You'll find tons of other videos like this one explaining diagnosis, care, follow up, and many other things. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.